So now that we have set up our custom user model, that means that we have introduced new code to the code base. So every time we introduce new code to the code base, what we are doing is we need to maintain that code. And to maintain that code, we really need to have specific ways in place to make sure that code we have written is working properly and it can be maintained in the long run. So basically maintaining means it can be changed with flexibility in the future, it can be added to, it can be removed, th things can be removed without breaking the core functionality that that code should be doing. So what we're gonna do now is you're going to add unit tests to verify that what we wrote was working and also to make sure that it can be safely changed in the future without breaking what we have. Now in the normal scenario, the way we would have done this is we should have written the test cases for what we did first first so we should have written the tests before we did the the custom user model but i understand that most of us might be starting out and that kind of terminology is what is called test driven development but it can be confusing at times so either way we are going to be adding tests for it and if there are any defects we should be able to spot them as we write those tests so i'm going to stop the server here so whenever you run a django project you have access to the test command so I'm going to do Python manager pure test like this. And then you can see that there are no tests at the moment. Also, I'm going to be installing a module that will help us to, to know which lines of code we have not tested. And that's called coverage. So here I'm going to do a pip install coverage and run it. So now that we have coverage installed, then we can use coverage to run the tests and also see the test report. So you can do coverage run manage the py test then we want to do and coverage report after test also we wanted to generate an html folder that can contain uh, a website which we can navigate and see our tests very well so here you can do coverage html like this so then we run so that's going to run the tests down here you can see that it finished okay so you will wait for it so on here you can see that it has tested everything and uh, we have the coverage so right now it's saying for 34 percent and that's because it has even tested things in the virtual environment so we want to really instruct it to not test those things so what i'm going to do is over here we are going to create a coverage.rc file so let me minimize so i'm going to create a file called coverage.rc so dot coverage rc like this okay so in the coverage rc then i'm going to bring in this so basically this omit some files from being from being discovered by coverage when it's collecting coverage so we want to only be looking in the authentication and then in the to-dos because that's the only code we have written if we had another piece of code we'll put it here if we have if we added another app we'd also put it here so also we want to be ignoring this so the virtual environment everything that has migrations in them everything that has tests in them and all these other things so now if we run back our coverage command again, you can see that this time it's faster and we can see that we have 50% of tests. So you see that our model file is not tested at all. It's on 53%. Now we need to raise this one to 100% so we can continue writing code confidently or at least see how we can test it in a scenario when, if we have to. So here I'm gonna open these, these, these folders. So here I'm gonna open this with live server. Feel free to open it the way you want. So it's gonna open in my browser. So here we can click on the models.py file. And every time you see the, the red, it means that those files, we need to test them. So that means we need to test the user must have a username if they must have an email. So we need to check if the program raises an error if, the, if we try to create a user without a username, those kinds of things. So to start adding tests, I'm gonna go back to our app so over here every time we have an app we have access to the test.py file since in an app we have many files so what i usually do is i usually remove the test.py file and then i usually create another module in a folder so here i'm gonna create a test then i'll have it under init under init like this.py by the way the under init if you're not familiar it pretty much tells python to look at this directory as a module and we can basically import from it so now in here we can have files that test these ones here so now that we're testing the models we can have a test underscore models so test underscore models.py like this 
So inside this file, you can set up our test class. It's going to be class test model. So we are going to be inheriting from something called API test case. Yes. So over here, we can go to REST framework dot test import API test case. Okay. So this is what gives us all the testing utilities, test our APIs. Okay. So now that we have this, we need to check if we really create a user, like if we can really create a user using our new model. So here I'm going to have a dev. Now, when you're writing tests, you want to make sure you start each test function with test underscore. Now we want to check if we create a user. So we can say test creates user. Cross text himself since we're in a class. Now, every time we import from API test case, we get access to all the assertion methods. So you can do something like self or assert equal, assert equal. So you can do equal one equals one minus zero, something like this, just for test. Okay, so this should be true, meaning this test should pass. So now if we run the tests, we should at least get more than zero tests to run. So let's, back, let's run it back with the coverage. So if we run that, you can see that now we have the test being matched. Okay, but this is doing nothing. It won't affect our coverage. So now we need to now do the real thing. So to test this model, we basically want to import this class and test all its methods. Okay, so I'm going to import it over here. We can say from authentication with models import this. Now I'm using an absolute import here, like for the app name, then the the app name, and then the other module. So we could do this, but for consistency, let's go ahead and use this because chances are on your team, you're going to be doing it using one and absolute modules are usually the way to go. Okay, so now that we have this, we can check if we can really create users using this mod here. So how do we check that? So to create a user, to create a user, we call objects create user. So you can say user equals user dot objects, then we call create user. Okay, like this. So now you can see that it takes in the username and then the email. So let's take the username as Christ. Then for the email, let's have Christ truly at gmail.com. Then we can pass their password here. So the password is going to be, let me pass password one, two, three at exclamation mark, exclamation mark at. Okay. So when we create this, we expect this one to be a user. So now we can have an assertion here. So we can do something like self assert equal. Then we can check if this user is an instance. So we can check if this user is an instance of the user. So how do we do that? So instead of, of asserting equal, we can say assert is instance. Okay. So now we can say we want this user object to be an instance of user like this. So also we can assert that this user has this email set to them by doing assert equal. So we can now say user.email is go it's going to be, it should be this. So now we can copy this and make sure that is the one here. Okay. So also when, whenever we call create user, it is, it is calling this one here in the manager. It is calling this one here. So meaning this should not be, this should not be created as a super user. So we want to add that check there. So we can also assert, so we can say we can assert false. So we want to say user dot is stuff should be false. Okay. All right. So now let's run back our test. So let's run it again. Now you can see that it passes. And now you can see that our coverage has increased. And our model is tested to 78%. So if we went back to the browser to see our test coverage, you can see that now create user is working properly and we have tested it properly. So let's test the create super user. Now create super user should be also fine to test, should be just similar to this, but really sharp. So let's say we should be able to create a super user. So to create a super user, we want to call create super user like this. So this is all fine, but we expect that this should be true and not false. So if we run this test, we expect it to fail really. So let's run it. Now you can see that it fails. That's because it's saying that 
when we create an object using create super user, our code is saying that they are being created as they are being created as staff users. So this is stuff is true for them. So what we want is to make sure that this is assert true. All right. And that should pass too. So let's run it. Now you can see that it passes and our coverage is increasing crazily. So that's uh, all good. So if we come here, now we have some tricky things we need to test down here. So we need to test that every time we try to create a user without the username, a value error is raised. So to test that, we can come over here. It should also be easier to test. Let's first, let's first have this. Okay, so here we want to say raises, test raises, so raises value error, raises error when no username is supplied. So something like this. So let's have it supplied because this should also be very descriptive. Make sure it's as descriptive as possible. So here, want to call create user without passing the, let's see in the test, without passing the username and also the email. So here I'm going to to supply named parameters here. So I'm gonna say username equals that, then email equals that, then the password equals that. So now I'm not gonna pass the username. So now for us to assert that this raises a value error, the way we can do it is we don't really have to call this one here directly. But what we want is over here, before we even run this, I'm actually gonna copy. So over here, what you can do is we can say self, we can do self dot assert raises. So when you say assert raises, we now specify what we need to raise or the type of error. So we want what we so we want to be raising a very error when we run this. So what you're gonna be running will be user objects create user. So want to copy this, don't copy the parameter section. Then you put a comma and here you specify the arguments separated by brackets. So here we want to pass username, then the password like this. So we can now pass them here like this. So we are saying we need this to raise a value error. So what we want to raise a value error will be this function whenever it is called with these arguments, okay? So you can see that it's a, it's a different syntax or a different way of writing it. So I'm gonna remove this section down here. All right, and now, and now you will see that we are not passing the username argument to this, even though the syntax is quite different this time. So now let's run back our tests so we can run that. So you can see that it fails. And the reason why it fails is because we are not passing the username at all. Now, what we want is to pass the username. So username, we want to pass an empty one. So we have the key. So a lot of the times when developers are like working on the front end of this, they're going to be supplying the username because for them, they will know, okay, we need to supply the username, but they won't. So what we want is to catch when they want, okay? So otherwise it's gonna be a developer error really on their side. So here, let's run back the, the tests. And now you can see that they pass, okay? So if we wanted to adjust our tests to really meet the other first instance, we would do that, we'd first check if it is there, then we check if it is not empty, those kinds of things, but now it's good. So if we come back, you can see that now that is working. So let's also check for the not email. So it's gonna be the same thing. By the way, if you wanted to check for if it was called with this specific error, so that can be useful if you don't want, if you want to prevent people to change your code sometime in the future, then you can now have self.assert raises message. So when you call raises message, the first thing you want to pass is the type of exception, which is the very error in our case. And then the next thing will be the message you're trying to match. So in this case, a message you want to match is the username must be set. So that means we can pass it here as a string. And also, whenever we are writing this code, I'm actually gonna create another test function. So let me copy this. So here we can say raises error message, raises error with message. Okay, let's have with message here. Let's remove this because we already have it. And this is just an example because our test is already catching it. So this test might not be that significant, but I want to show you if you want to test for the message. Now, if you want to test for the message, you're going to need to write your code in a in a context manager. So the way those work is you, can, you now write your expression and then you run the function that you should raise that exception. So here to write that you can do with, 
So we can do with, then we want to do self dot start raises. You want to do full colon at the end and then inside. Now you can run the expression. So the one we want to run is using is this. So it's going to be user.objects.create. So I'm going to bring in all this. So let me remove this actually. So now inside here, then we can pass this. So user.objects.create user. Then we want to pass this. Now I'm going to be using name with parameters here. So things make sense. So username should be, let's say it's empty because that's what we want to check. Then email, then the password. So here we can have password equals that. So now if we save this, we expect this to re raise an exception with this message. Okay. So let's run back our test. And you can see that the test passes, although it doesn't increase the, the test coverage, but this is how you do it if you want to test the message. Okay. So let's test the super user to make sure that the super user is created because it looks like, oh, we need to test the mail. So let's have this. So for the email, I'm just going to repress here this to email. Similarly, let's have email here. Then when we are passing, let's pass the username. The username should now not be empty. Then email should be empty because now we want to match it. All right. Then we can now do the same thing here. So username will be there. But email should be empty. So this should be when no email is applied, her name is applied. So this should fail because it is still checking the username. Also, this should pass because we are not passing the email. At least that's what we expect. So let's run back these tests here. So you can see that most of them pass, but this one fails. So it is saying that the given username must be set is not found. The given name must be set is what the program does. So let's change it. Uh, and basically that shows that the application is working. So let's change that and now run back the, the tests. Now you can see that all the tests pass and our models are on 93%, which is great. So now let's check that when super users are created without the is stuff. So whenever extra fields are passed and then we are not sending is stuff to be true, then it, it sh the program should raise an error. So let's test these two lines over there. So the way we can test those is I'm going to have a function called create super user with super user status. So anything from that should fail. So it's going to be create super user with super user status, then have, let's have self. Okay. So let's make sure that whenever we call create super user and we pass like his stuff is not true, then it should raise this error here. So the way we do that is we are going to see how we created, actually we're going to be using this context manager type of thing. So let's go here. Now we can have with assert raises. So we need to be checking for this message that to make sure this message is, is raised. So we can come here and then we say super user must have his stuff to true. When we try to say it should be create super user, then let's have the username there. And then for some reason, let's say someone passed his stuff to false. So that should fail, should raise this message here. So let's run it. So we need to indent properly. Oh, there's an issue here. So this should be only one. Yes, let's run back. Now you can see that they pass and now we are on 96%. Now you can see it's covered. Let's also check for this. It should be really easy. It should be similar to this. Okay, it's great super user with super user status. So let's change this one to stuff is stuff. So also here let's have super user, that's fine. So let's make sure now this message is being raised and stuff to true. This should be super user to true. Then here we are going to be passing is super. That should always be true for admin users. Actually, it should be is super user like this great super user. So if we run this, it should also pass. Now you can see that we have tested to 98%. And then the code that's not tested is this token field, which are going to be dealing with later. So that's going to do it for now. I hope this gave you a good introduction to how you can test like custom models. Also, I hope it gave you a good introduction on how to test in general. If you guys didn't have any idea how to, so things like checking for which messages are raised, which exceptions are raised by certain function calls. So yeah. So thanks guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you in the next 
section.